there. Welcome. This is uh, the Winter Zoom Embroidery Series Class 5 and the second class in our floral stitch sampler. And today we're going to be doing some really fun sort of three-dimensional stitches. We're going to be doing what's called turkey work, um, which is this fun fringy stuff here. And you can have fringe that sticks straight up in the air like animal fur, or you can have fringe that's sort of tacked down and lays a little bit more flush with the fabric, which is great for making these fun, um, like kind of crazy, da crazy daisies. Um, and we're going to be doing an orientation today where we do some satin stitch over the top, which gives us this fun sort of triangular shaped flower. So we're going to start with that and then we'll jump into the feather stitch and the woven wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and make this um camera prominent for you and we'll get going okay here we go so we are going to be going for this uh triangle shaped flower like i said with our turkey work so you grab your um, embroidery floss this stitch definitely works best with the floss because you've got six strands here that when you cut them they're going to have that fringy fluff happening you can work with a double strand of thread um, which if you're willing to use a lot of thread is going to be faster. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and work with a single so I don't waste thread on our demo. Um, but again, it's up to you. If you're working on, a, on your finished piece, go ahead and go for a double thread knotted together at the end. So again, here's our flower. Go ahead and stitch, or I'm sorry, go ahead and draw with your pencil or your erasable pen the shape that you want your flower to be. And then go ahead and sketch in where you're gonna have your stem be later. Okay, and then with this version, we're gonna put a pin into our fabric up here at the top of our Y. This can be a, a long needle, it can be a straight pin that you would use for sewing, it can be a safety pin, anything will work. This is not the traditional way to do turkey work, but it, it, it's fun and it's fast to do it this way. Okay, so I've got my embroidery floss. I'm gonna come in. It's always a good idea to sort of start in the middle, even though we're gonna be working from side to side. Um, it's a good idea to start in the middle. And I am gonna draw in another little line there. So that's where I'm gonna have my green be. But I'm gonna have my fringe come all the way up to my pin. So coming in from the bottom coming in from underneath. And I'm going to just slip my needle under my pin here, not penetrating the fabric. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back down right next to where I came in or even better, right underneath my first thread. I'm not gonna go in the same hole, I'm just gonna go in sort of underneath. All right, then I'm gonna come up again, right next to it. I'm gonna follow my drawn line all the way up the side, come back down under my pin. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna put my fabric, my, sorry, my needle back into my fabric underneath my thread and come back up right next to it on my line. Okay, and you're just gonna keep doing that, keeping your, uh, thread coming up and down on your drawn line of your triangle. So this, this method with the pin is kind of a cheaty method of doing turkey work because it keeps your loops from going back down in the fabric when you pull. When you do turkey work, normally you have to tack your loops down if you're not using this pin. Now, the other reason that this works is because we're going to tack our threads down with the satin stitch on top. So after we do our stem, I'm going to show you the more traditional way to do turkey work if you don't want to do the satin stitch on top of it. All right. Oops. Okay. So like I said, you just keep going 
I'm going to keep going. I want to make sure that these stay lined up next to each other. And I'm going to keep going until I get to my little line that I drew here. You don't want to go past this line because if you go above where your satin stitch is going to hold these in place, it will fall out. Your, your fringe will fall out. So make sure you follow your line there. I'm going to go back in for this one. Okay, and now um, we're going to pretend that I've finished. I'm going to go ahead and knot this off on the back like I always do. Pretend that I came over here and did this side. Do, 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 all the way up to my line here. So I'm going to go ahead and knot this off. All right, make my loop. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take my green. And I'm going to do my satin stitch. And I'm going to redraw this line so I can really see where I'm going. And you remember the satin stitch, it's just parallel stitches following a shape. So this is going to be a raised satin stitch, if you recall, because we have our turkey work done underneath. So I'm just gonna come across the top. I like, I think my satin stitch looks nicer if I loop all the way around underneath that of course, uses more thread than going um, up, down, and then coming back right next to it. But I think it looks nicer, so I'm going to go for it. Watch me here. I'm doing the pro move, right? Needle goes in and out in one motion, as opposed to pulling my thread all the way through on one side and then back up on the other. So I can do this, OK? Don't want to be looping my thread for the satin stitch. I'm just going to make these nice, close, parallel stitches. And again, these are serving the function of holding down my turkey work. So these are really, really important. And you're going to go all the way down in the shape of your full triangle here. There we go. Okay, so what you end up with is your full triangle shape done here. You're going to knot off at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to, we're just going to pretend that I've done all that. Y'all don't need to watch me do that. Um, and so this is all done. This is knotted off. This is knotted off. Okay, you've got your full shape filled. You pull out your pin and you're going to take your little scissors. If you have big scissors, it'll work too. You just have to, you know, be a little more careful with it. But all I have to do is snip and I get my fringe. Okay. And the trick is to take your needle or even the little scissors I like, they work, they're a little bit thicker and you sort of separate your strands and then it gets even more fringy and fluffy, okay? So that's, that's turkey work. Now this is when you're pinning it down. See what I did there? I pulled my loop. That's why you cover the whole thing. This is holding it down so this lays flush. I'll show you the method for um, having it stick straight up in a little while. But in the meantime, we're gonna move on to our feather stitch. And I'm gonna get this down here. Gonna knot it off. Okay, but I'm not even gonna cut it off because I'm gonna use it for my feather stitch for my stem. So for the feather stitch, I feel like this light could be brighter. There we go, sorry about that. Okay, 
So for your feather stitch, which is this fun little stitch here, this is worked traditionally on a series of parallel lines that are drawn here. We're gonna do the simplest version, which has three lines. So that middle line you drew for your stem is gonna stay the middle line. And then you're gonna draw two lines, one on either side. Now, if you have an air soluble or a water soluble pen, go ahead and make those lines. If you're using a pencil, just make those lines really, really light because they're, gonna, they're not going to get covered up completely. So for your feather stitch, you are gonna come up, start in the middle at the base of your flower. And then you can work uh, either to the left or the right. It doesn't matter because we're gonna be alternating. What I'm gonna do is I've come up in the middle. I'm gonna go to the left first. I'm gonna come, here's where my stitch comes out. I'm gonna come down a stitch length and I'm gonna go back in one stitch length down on the line to the left. And then pro move, I'm gonna come back down another stitch length on my middle line. So up in the middle, down on the left, back up in the middle. And each time I move left to right, I'm also moving down a stitch length. This is like our lazy daisy now. I've got this loop and I wanna make sure my needle goes through it. Okay, and that is going to, when I pull, my little loop is gonna hook. So if we were doing lazy daisy, I would just tack this down, but we're not doing lazy daisy, we're doing feather stitch. So I've just gone to the left, now I'm gonna to go to the right. I'm gonna go needle down, one stitch length lower, come back out, one stitch length lower, back to the middle. So it's left, middle, right, middle. Left, middle, right, middle. Come back out. Got my thread under here. Okay, there we go. So that was the middle. So now I'm gonna go left, one stitch length down, back to the middle, one stitch length down. Okay, my thread is underneath. There it is. So on the handout that I'm get that you'll get in your email, um, I there's a diagrams for doing four lines, five lines, and six lines. You can uh, feather stitch can get really fun and crazy. And this is traditional. You don't have to go back and forth. You can really mix this up and get sort of abstract with it. Your um, depending on how far down uh, and how far over you go, your little feathers can be all different sizes. It, they don't have to be uniform. So this is the basic structure is to do it this way. So now I'm going back to the left, one stitch length down, and then coming back up in the middle, one stitch length down. My thread is hooked here, just like in the Lazy Daisy. Okay. And then to end it, having my little um, when I'm back in the middle, if I want my little stem to look like it's going back in the ground, I can just go down in here. And that's the feather stitch. Gonna knot off like usual. I'm gonna do a double on that one because it's kind of a big gap. Okay. All right. So over on my original stitch sampler over here, I did my um, turkey work in yellow, got my little triangle. Here's my feather stitch. Now I'm going to show you how to do the traditional turkey work where it doesn't have the satin stitch holding it down. And we'll do that for these little guys here. So you want to go back to your thread that you were using up here. tie a knot. Okay, I'm going to start over here on this one. I'm going to come up right above it. Oops. And for this, we're going to make a loop. We don't have our needle here to hook it onto, so I'm going to eyeball my loop. You could always draw a line if you want to, if you want to um, know where 
your um, if you're going to do multiple loops and you want to have them be consistent, you can always draw a little guideline for yourself. I'm just going to eyeball it here. So I've got this little loop. Now, traditional turkey work, not held by satin stitch. This loop, if I don't tack it down somehow, it's just going to fall out of here whenever I pull on my thread. So if I want my um, little petals to be flush against the fabric, which I do, I'm gonna come back up next to my loop. Now I'm sort of, I'm sort of pinching this here so that my loop doesn't come out. Because if I pull on this too hard, my loop's gonna go right through the fabric and I don't want that. But I, now I've got, this is taut on the back. And I'm gonna tack this down. I'm gonna do a little tacking stitch right on top of my loop. Okay, so now when I pull on my thread, pull, 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 I'm giving that a tug, my loop stays in place. So this is very, very key. If you're not holding it down with satin, satin stitch, it's loop, tack, loop, tack, loop, tack, always. So now I can come up and do another little loop. Okay, I'm gonna go back down. I'll go over here right next to it, not the same hole, just right next to it. Although I suppose you could do the same hole actually. All right. Here's my little loop, it's about the same size. Now I'm gonna come up next to it. Oops, see that? I pulled too hard and it went back in. So I'm gonna use my needle here to Get my loop back out. My turkey feathers will be way too short if I don't get my loop back out. Okay. There we go. I've got my I got my second loop back. Now gotta tack it. And I can um I'm just gonna find a little spot over here where I can be kind of discreet and tack that. Oops. I should have worked a little bigger for y'all to see this better. I apologize. Okay, now I've tacked both my loops. I can tug on my thread, tug, tug, tug. My loops don't go anywhere, okay? So now I can just jump over here and do the next one if I want. Or of course, um, if I was Elizabeth Bennett in Pride and Prejudice, I would tie a knot behind my flower before I moved on over here. Actually, Elizabeth Bennett might not have done that. Um, so once I've got these loops in and they're securely tacked, then I can trim them with my scissors and get this cute little fringe. Now, the more loops you do, the fuller your fringe is going to be. If that feels too long, you just give them a little haircut, which is kind of fun. So that's that. Now, if you want to have your fringe be like animal fur, a little bit of a different method. You're going to make a loop just like you would for the flower method. I'm going to go down. I'm going to leave a little gap between where my needle came up and went down for my loop. Okay. I'm going to make, leave this loop bigger so you can see. Now my tacking stitch, I'm not going to hold down my loop. I'm actually going to put it right in between. See that? It's gonna go right in between my loop. So it's not actually gonna be touching my loop. My loop is free to move about the cabin. Okay, nice and loose so that when I trim it, it's sticking straight up. You can do it that way or you can really put your tacking stitch anywhere you want. It, it honestly doesn't matter. So if I do another loop over here, going in next to it, here's my loop. Okay, I can just put my loop back here. Just do it back here. We're going to kind of hide it right next to it. The only thing that you want to be careful about is you want to not put your tacking stitch where it's going to get in your way if you're doing a big thing, um, a big uh, like square inch of loops. You want to just keep that out of your way. So in that case, maybe it would be better to go right in between. 
So there's my tacking stitch, very discreet back there. Okay, tugging, my loop stays in place, All right? Same thing, those are now sticking up in the air as opposed to being held down against the fabric. Give those a little trim. And now I've got this sticky uppy flush. Uh, sorry, sticky uppy fluff that is not flush. Ha, whew. All right, so that's turkey work. Pretty fun stuff. All right, I have shifted my embroidery hoop and we are going to move on to our woven wheel stitch. Um, in class, uh, I'm recording this video before class. In class, I think we're only gonna have time for the woven wheel. But in this video, I'm gonna give you a bonus stitch of the spider web stitch. So if you turn these sideways, let me lift up my camera here. If I turn these sideways, you can see that the woven wheel really, really sticks up from the fabric, whereas the spider web is a little bit more flat. They're very similar and we're gonna work them in this video together so that we get the spider web on the inside and the woven wheel around the edge. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. But basically the same method, which you will see. So I'm gonna use a glue stick lead to make my circle so it's nice and big for you to see. Um, depends how big you want your flower to be, but I would definitely recommend tracing a circle of some kind. Maybe a nickel or a penny. Put that back on so my glue doesn't dry out. Okay, now you want to find the center. Um, and you want to get pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but finding a, a close center is good. Now we're going to do for the woven wheel, which is the one that's raised up high, you always have to do an odd number of spokes on your wheel. So that's an odd number of spokes on your wheel always for the woven wheel. For your spider web, you can go odd or even. So we're just gonna go odd, that way we can go back and forth if we want. So I'm gonna go five. This does not have to be perfect. And this is kind of a toughie. So I'm gonna go one down from the top. Then I'm gonna draw like the Mercedes Benz symbol, not a peace sign. Got two little legs coming down here. Maybe this is the flux capacitor from Back to the Future. Then I'm gonna draw two more up here. So I've got five. So this is not perfect. I see that these little side bits are a little bit wider, but honestly, that's fine. It's not gonna make a huge difference in the way that it looks. And then I'm gonna use this yellow Pearl Cotton 3, this is the fat stuff, which is what I told you in class to use for your, um, for your woven wheel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna sew the spokes of our wheel on with thread, but we're not going to deal with the outside. The outside circle is just a guideline. I'm going outside to inside. Okay, all five spokes are now sewn. All right, now I'm gonna continue on with this thread. I don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna come back up. Now my thread's pretty short. I'm not gonna get very far, but we're gonna start with the spider web. For the spider web, I'm going to come up just sort of in between two of my spokes. Now you would do this exactly the same on the woven wheel as well, if you were going straight woven wheel. You're gonna come up. And I am now going to be working completely on top of my fabric. I won't be penetrating the fabric with my needle again until the end or until I run out of thread, which is gonna be pretty soon. <laughs> so for my spider wheel, uh, my spider web, I'm going to be using the the eye of my needle first, because I'm gonna be doing like a little bit of a weaving here like we've done before. It's just easier if you start with a blunt end or you can split, uh, switch to a tapestry needle. But I'm gonna go over and back under. So this is facing away from me. My body's back here. I'm going to 
sort of just hold on to the tail of my thread and push this back towards myself. So I've just done a little wrap there, okay? Just one, very hard to see. I'm gonna turn this and go to the next one, hold this off to the side out of my way, push this back towards myself and just sort of keep it towards the center. I'm just gonna keep turning this and coming underneath towards myself. Underneath towards myself. Okay. So I just keep doing this. Round and round and round we go. Uh, my needle, my thread's starting to get a little twisted. So if I hold it up in the air and let my needle hang down, you know, you can't see what I'm doing, but it sort of untwists my thread. So again, holding my tail out of my way, needle is going back towards myself underneath that little spoke. Keep moving my hoop out of frame, I apologize. Okay, here we go. Just keep rotating. So this is the spider web and it just creates this nice little solid shape that gets um, sort of straight edges. And what I mean by that is I can see the sides, uh, these straight lines in between my spokes, whereas on this woven wheel, it's more of a circular shape. That's why I think it's nice to start with the spider web if you want to combine the two, because we'll get it round on the outside. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do this real quick until I run out of thread, and then we're going to switch threads and move to the woven wheel. Okay. All right, so to finish this off, I'm going to, uh, you could just move straight into the woven wheel if you wanna use the same color. If you wanna switch colors or if you run out of thread ever while doing this, you're just going to come. So I just wrapped around this spoke and I'm just going to poke in underneath through the fabric, you'll never see it because it's underneath my spider's web. Okay, and I'm gonna knot this off. Trim that, trim this one I started with while I'm at it. All right, and then I am going to switch over. to a different color. I'm gonna use green just because I happen to have it threaded already. Thought I had some pink ready to go, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna come out. Now I'm starting the um, woven wheel. So for the woven wheel, same thing. I'm just gonna pick a place to come out. I'm gonna come out right next to a spoke. So I'm not coming through any thread. I'm just coming out in the fabric right next to a spoke. And now we're going to weave. We're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. Again, I'm going to use the back side of my needle, the blunt side, the eye first. So I'm going to go over this one, under this one. Yeah, I find it easier to turn my hoop when I do this. I'm going to go over this one and then under this one. Okay, over, under. All right, and here I can see that because I have an odd number, they're gonna alternate. I went under, my green went under here. So this time it goes over, over there and under the one next to it. Whoops, not two, just one. And I'm gonna keep going. And I'm just sort of pulling this taut every time. And the, the more you pull it taut, that is how you get that raised effect because it's just going to keep building on itself and building and building and building. Um, this uses a lot of thread to get that nice high wheel. But it's such a pretty effect. So, you know, if you want to, if you're concerned about using too much thread or if you don't have thread, uh, you can always start with a smaller circle, but it looks really cool if you change colors as well. So I'm going to pause the video. So you can see what this looks like as I make a little more progress. So, 
All right, so I've made quite a bit of progress here going around. I'm about to run out of thread again. So, oops, I missed one. Um, I'm just gonna show you again how to finish this off. Pardon me while I re-thread my needle. I had five threads going, not six. Um, and so you could switch back and forth between the spider web and the woven wheel. Again, if, when you run out of thread, this is so pretty when you change colors. So that's always an option. All right, my fifth thread is being stubborn. So I'm just gonna leave it out. So I'm gonna go over this next one, under this one, might as well use all the thread I can, back over this one, under this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna tuck this. I'm just gonna put my needle back under my woven wheel now. Come under here and I can just attach it to my little spokes there. That works just fine. So that is those two stitches. And these are really fun for, um, here, let's just turn that off and pretend it's not there. There's my beautiful little flower. So I would just keep going with that with either one of those stitches around here. Now, if you want to do something like this, where it's a big circle, this is all woven wheel, um, but it has this big open space. So you could fill this with French knots. You could do one of our woven stitches in there. You could do all kinds of stuff in there. So um, to do that, so for our woven wheel here, here, remember we drew a circle with an odd number of spokes. Okay, for this open circle one, you're gonna draw two concentric circles. Your thread will be in here. Now you've got to have your spokes to weave in and out of. If you only do five like this, your when you weave them, you're gonna your threads are gonna make they're gonna come into the center here, and it's you're not gonna get a nice round um, pattern with your thread. So you really need to do quite a few spokes if you have a you want a big nice round open circle. For this one here, I did thirteen spokes, so a little more time consuming for the weaving, because you're doing in and out, in and out, in and out. But the more spokes you have, the more of a roundness you're gonna get. And that goes back to our running stitch, where if you wanna turn corners, you gotta keep those stitches small. So it's the same idea. So what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's not gonna work, 13. So that is how you wanna do a big open one like that. And I'm gonna give you one more bonus stitch. Oh my goodness. One more bonus stitch. And that is this one here, which is another way to do a stem. And you already know how to do this because it is just a whipped double back stitch or a whipped stem stitch. But it's very tightly whipped. And uh, if you're gonna do the double back stitch, you want those stitches to be staggered. So if you're gonna use a double back stitch for this, you're gonna have your stitches be back stitch, back stitch. Remember how the back stitch makes like a very tight little running stitch. You want them to be staggered. So your first one, you can make it extra long, an extra stitch and a half, uh, stitch and a half length, let's say. And then it'll be like this, sort of like bricks. You don't want the spaces in between your stitches to line up, right? They need to have, I'll do it bigger. You want your staggered back stitch to look like that, okay? I am going to do a running stitch and I'm gonna, I'm sorry, not a running stitch, a stem stitch, which we learned last week. I'm gonna do it right over that line. I'm gonna do this really fast. Remember our stem stitch comes up and we come back one for the pro move, coming down on the line. It makes them right next to each other. So here's my stem stitch. And you can do an elongated stem stitch, which means if it's elongated, it just means that your stitches are really, really long because we're doing it quick. And we're gonna cover it up so we're not overly concerned about it. 
So there's my stem stitch. Now I'm going to whip it. I'm going to whip it very tightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to come up next to it. And for whipping, which we did in our very first class way back in the day, you go under your stitch and wind. We did a very wide whip stitch where we just sort of did it look like kind of like a barber pole. For this, you're going to do an incredibly tight whip stitch. So you're actually going to be wrapping this and have your whips be parallel and touching. You'll be doing the exact same thing if you decide to do a staggered back stitch. And this is really fun going along with our sort of 3D stitches today because it really raises this very straight line. You can see how far off that here's my unwhipped area. And then back here, this really sticks up. It's like a little, um, it's like a little rope sitting on top of the fabric. It's pretty dark. Let's see here. It's hard to see with my dark thread, but anyway, oh, there we go. That helps. So again, just a very tightly whipped stem stitch or a very tightly whipped double staggered back stitch will give you this very nice three-dimensional rope shape. Here it is over here. Again, you can see how much it sticks off the fabric. So there's your second bonus stitch of the day. Thank you so much. Your handout will have um, lots of, uh, again, those diagrams for the feather stitch done on more lines, and it will have some ideas for you for using turkey work. So thanks for being here, and I will see you again next time. Bye.